The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. A little bit stuffed up still, dealing with a little bit of a cold. I feel pretty good, but it sounds like I'm a little stuffed up. I'll probably get over it this weekend, get a little rest, get a little hot tea in me. Uh, but we get the markets picking things up in red territory with the S&Ps off by 10 points. Quite the close of yesterday, right? We were on the air early yesterday talking about maybe a red market. That carried until about... 30 minutes before the close, when you had the S&Ps trade up 25, almost 30 points, really 30 points. From 3.20 Eastern time, you were trading at 45.50, and we made it to within a half a point of a 30-point run. You make it to higher price of 45.85 overnight. We're backing off a bit right now at 45.66 as we kick off December trading. Quite the month of November and quite the little acceleration to pad that monthly number. I mean, you're talking about what? Two-thirds of a percent it added in the last 30 to 40 minutes of trading for the month as we come into now the final month of the trading year. More implications, of course, of how we end this year. Tax loss um, gains would, would be, you know, are you going to lock in anything? Are you going to wait until January 1st to try and defer some of those capital gains taxes? We'll see how this month plays out. Nonetheless, we got markets in red. NASDAQ 100 didn't quite get the uh, full pullback back as the S&P did, right? We looked at the S&P. It got the entire move from where we were at 8.30 in the morning to all the way at the lows to the end of the day. NASDAQ 100, not so much the case. Now, we have rising yield, so that probably impacting the NASDAQ 100 a little bit more. Apologize, I feel so stuffed up um, that I'm so stuffed up, but I feel pretty good just getting over a little bit of a stuffed up cold. The Dow right now, negative by 24 points. We're above 36,100. We back off to just under 36,000, and then you got the Russell, negative by four. Boy, the Russell volatility, especially on Wednesday, right? You had almost a 2% acceleration up and down. Crude sitting at about 76 bucks. Crude drops from almost 80 down to almost 75 yesterday. You're talking about more than a $4 move to the downside. You have the gold contract down about $1. That's 2055 right now. Gold, and ho gold holding up pretty well, right? You're chopping around basically between about 2050 and the 2070 area for gold. All-time highs, 2089, I believe. There's 2085 earlier this year. Uh, no, that's it. 2085 is the number I have for an all-time high on the gold futures. Not sure if that deviates at all when you're talking about the futures and the rolling of contracts, et cetera. All right, we got to talk about yields. Pretty flat number right now. We're back to a 10-minute chart. Quite the acceleration carrying through this week, right? You're talking about almost two and a half points higher from 108.06 last Friday to 110.15. But yesterday on that inflation number, man, we had quite a little pullback with yields popping a bit. You got the 10-year right now at 4.34%. You were as high as 110.10 coming into that number. So we've pulled back about half half a point. Uh, I think my volume's working, Johnny. Hopefully. Maybe you guys can let me know. Uh, is my voice working? Is my are my are my nostrils working? It's a better question in terms of being a little stuffed up. Uh, but yes, markets picking things up in red territory this morning as we kick things off, and we'll see where we go as we kick off the beginning of December trading. All right, jumping around to what we got going on, got going on. Let's talk a little Elon. Couldn't be a program without talking uh, about the man Elon Musk. We pull up Tesla today. So Tesla unveils their Cybertruck. They sell the first Cybertruck, $61,000, man. Elon just gets to talk about anything. And we all know prices have risen dramatically since this was talked about, but I think it was, was it 2019? Yeah, 2019, I think they got a picture of him with a price of about 39.9, under 40,000, which is what they were gonna push it out at. Well, you're talking about 61,000. And you're talking about <clears throat> that they have a million people that have signed up for this thing. You're not going to be getting your car for three or four years. Real production starting maybe 2025 as they're pushing out vehicles. It's got some specs, that's for sure. It can tow over 11,000 pounds. 
And boy, these electric vehicles, when they get going, man, zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Uh, is it aluminum they're made out of? I was reading something last night that I think they're made out of aluminum. And one of the problems is they're not able to, to mold the aluminum as they thought they may want to. Yeah, 39.9. Now, it's a $100 refundable reservation. Customers must now put down 250 to move ahead with the Cybertruck order. It's amazing the type of money that he gets, right? Think about it. Even a million people putting down 100 bucks is $100 million that he just got loaned, and they might not get their car in four or five years. Amazing how he used that in some of the toughest times for their cash crunch. Uh, don't look to the Cybertruck to, to really deliver on their numbers. You got Tesla down seven bucks today. You know, you talk about their freight services, stuff like that. You talk about uh, mass producing the Model 3 or something like that. I wonder how many people are going to be interested in that truck over the million that already signed up to buy one that they're going to take like four or five years to push out, right? Something to consider. Nonetheless, he makes some headlines as usual. Uh, yeah, pretty remarkable. Let's jump around to some of the fag stocks as we get the NASDAQ 100 down 53 right now. NASDAQ 100, uh, excuse me, Apple, just remarkable, these companies. Apple got it all back yesterday. NASDAQ 100 didn't, but Apple did. They give up some of that. We're negative by only 30 pennies right now on Apple shares. Microsoft, basically flat. They make an all-time high this week to 385.40 right there. Let's jump to Amazon shares. Down a bit, 145.82. We jump over to NVIDIA shares. Yeah, quite a fall off for NVIDIA yesterday. They got nothing back. Right? So interesting how there's such a divergence here. Uh, you see the S&P got the whole move back. Apple got the whole move back yesterday. NVIDIA got none of the move back yesterday. So there is a little bit of a rotation here in terms of when that buying came into the market, check out how none of it came into NVIDIA. Okay? It's a little bit of a wake up potentially for NVIDIA shares. I mean, look at the, the acceleration you had on Apple coming into the end of the day. Apple traded up $2.00. That's $32 billion in market cap that Apple added from the lowest, and NVIDIA couldn't even get a bid. We jump over to Netflix shares. Netflix, down a bit. Yeah, they couldn't get anything back either. So interesting how this is going. Now, Disney, they got their own woes going on. Look at the volatility on Disney, right? We jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. You know, I saw some great sales over Black Friday for HBO, and what I found interesting was is they, they were – now, I subscribe to a year of HBO Max – I signed up for some type of promotion at one point in the last couple of years. I think it got me like six months at a special rate, and then it renewed at the yearly rate after that. And it might be as high as something like $179 for the entire year. Might be. It's expensive service for sure, especially paying upfront for the year. What I found interesting was what they were pushing on Black Friday was $2.99 a month, I think for six months. And I said to myself, because I've done this before, folks, you see some of those specials, you can literally go out, cancel your membership and sign back up with the promotional rate. OK. I said, oh, man, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should go cancel my yearly. I'll get a prorated refund and I'll sign back up at the promotional rate. Then I realized that they were pushing the service with ads. Ah, I already paid for it. I'll just uh, keep it with no ads. I think you're going to see those numbers really rise with the amount of people that they bring onto those platforms with ads. We're already seeing it with Netflix. Uh, you're going to see it with Disney, and you're going to see it with Warner Brothers Discovery with HBO. Because that was a heck of a special. For those that don't have HBO, three bucks a month for six months, I can do some ads. So keep your eye on Warner Brothers Discovery. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back. S&P is negative by 11. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. have a little hot tea, a little lemon and ginger tea with no caffeine. I have a little bit of a coffee to kick things off, and I'm a big coffee fan. But when you're feeling like this, you got a little bit of tea. I put a little bit of honey in there, a little bit of lemon as well. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, you can enjoy that as well. Hopefully, it helps me out throughout the hour. But I appreciate you tuning in. We get the S&Ps down by 12. We kick off December trading. And the headlines this morning, yeah, not good. But in the same step, unfortunately, not too surprising as Israel says the Hamas, that Hamas has violated the terms of the ceasefire and the truce lapses. Now, that is from Bloomberg. Yeah, and if you jump over to the front page of the journal, you're talking about fighting resumes in Gaza as week-long ceasefire stalls. It's a sad state of affairs for humanity, no matter what, but not surprising, you know, considering how do you have really a ceasefire with Hamas when what goes on, what goes on. So we'll see how that plays out. Hopefully it doesn't escalate for humanity. Hopefully it doesn't escalate into anything further in terms of bringing in partners there, which could even for the markets really throw things in a little bit of a wrench, but uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, what else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of weight loss. Pfizer, now it seems like the, the news just keeps on coming with these weight loss drugs, right? So Pfizer is gonna discontinue their twice daily weight loss pill due to high rates of adverse side effects. Now, I've said it before, folks, and there's probably ways to help start somebody off on the journey. And I am not a doctor, okay? But it's very difficult for me to understand how a drug is going to cause the body to eat less without causing some potential side effects. Because we already have that drug, actually. We have stimulants, man. Um, you know. You do a bunch of a Ritalin or Adderall or whatever about it, drugs, right? You don't get hungry. So it's it's just difficult to understand how something as simple as, you know, you got to eat healthier, move a little bit more. Now, people who are dealing with diabetes, all that stuff, it makes sense. Maybe you get a Kickstarter or something. But the holy grail, I, I, it's just very difficult to understand. Listen, technology is amazing and technology in biotechnology and all that stuff is pretty amazing. But yeah, it seems like, you know, we've we've been down this road before and very difficult to understand how there's going to be some type of holy grail. When the real holy grail is, it's not easy, man. You know, everything's a sacrifice in terms of, you know, do you want to make that sacrifice now by eating a little bit healthier or make that sacrifice later by dealing with the consequences and we all deal with it. But I would not be trying to rely on drugs for perpetuity, right? 
and some of these drugs are saying it's a kickstart, which I think is a phenomenal idea because momentum is everything. The first step is the hardest step in almost anything in life. It really is. Once you get going, right, momentum is in play. Momentum is a real deal, much more so than just like objects in play in a car. So maybe that's part of it. But nonetheless, yeah, Pfizer and its hopes to win a $10 billion slice of the booming weight loss drug. Nope, not going to happen. Uh, now, this market is growing. It is. That is without doubt. But be a little skeptical there. That's all I'm going to. And you see the drop off that Pfizer has, right, on those numbers to get to the punchline. That's a 5% drop. Okay, so everyone's going for it. And they got a couple that are going to be in play right now. And it seems like insurance companies are going to have to cover it if it's down the line trans um, meaning that it's contributing to lower health care costs. It's contributing to lower, whether it's what, diabetes, heart issues, et cetera. Uh, but Pfizer, not so much this morning as they opened down about 5% on the open with the S&Ps off by about 11. All right, what else? We talked a little Elon. We talked about the war, unfortunately. Uh, what else do I got pulled up here? It'd be interesting to see. We're one week away from the jobs number. So that's going to be the focus as we come into next Friday. A couple articles we can touch on. I mean, Bloomberg's got one up here talking about, of course, the Fed officials shifting the tone, but remain wary of markets' aggressive rate cuts. Very difficult to imagine that they're going to be hiking, right? So if they're nowhere near hiking, it's almost, it's a guarantee, all right? Nothing's a guarantee in context and disclaimer, but it's a guarantee that they're going to stay the course right now because Chairman Powell has said they're not even talking about cuts, okay? Is there any chance they're going to hike? No. If they, they've told the public they're not even talking about cuts, then they can't cut this time. So we go down the line from there. Uh, but we got a Fed meeting coming up a week from this coming Wednesday. which So we got Friday, December 8th, non-farm payrolls, and the next Wednesday, December 13th, is a Fed meeting. Um, and yeah, it should be surprising in the recent days. The market's already priced this in, right? This is talking about the policymakers indicating in recent days that they were comfortable with keeping rates steady at their December meeting, encouraged by the downward trend in inflation and the data showing a slowing economy. Well, that's in the last couple of days. But the market already knew that because we just traded from 1.510 to a high of 1.1015. And actually, over the last couple of days, you've got a little bit of a pullback. So the market figured this out pretty quickly with the economic data uh, and with Chairman Powell at the last Fed meeting as well, in terms of his words, his rhetoric, everything going on, his last speech maybe, maybe maybe his last speech he made at that, what was it, the New York Economic Council or something. Uh, nonetheless, they are reiterating that now. So that is the base case. The base case is they're done hiking, they're staying where they are, and now the only question is, when do they have to cut? And the numbers we saw yesterday are pretty encouraging. All I'll remind you is that we just had the 10-year drop by 60 to almost 70 basis points. That's three quarter point cuts right there, right? There's already been a rapid reversal. You saw that yesterday. Pretty remarkable with the numbers that we got for the PCE deflator yesterday. You're talking about the low threes. The low threes with where the economy is, that's Goldilocks scenario. We are on our way back to a two-handle for inflation. Meanwhile, GDP's grown at like 5.7% or something bonkers for what we've been going through. There are some weakness signs. There's some consumer signs of savings, of spending that might be a little bit of weak there. That's the worry as we play out. The lag as we go three to six months out, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, but surprising that we got that type of a inflation number, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge yesterday, and what did people say? They said, I'm selling treasuries, and they sold them. So remember that when you look for the expectations. Uh, we'll leave it at that. All right, let's jump around to some of the banks. Speaking of rates, J.P. Morgan, it's been quite a run, man. Pretty remarkable that you get this type of a run as you had yields decreasing, right? Yields are going down. And J.P. Morgan is going up with the market, though, because the market loves it. And you just trade from 136 to 156 when you've had yields drop dramatically over that time. All the banks, Bank of America, from 24 to $30 over that time. Wells Fargo, from what, 39 to $45 over that time. Pretty remarkable runs across the board. 
All right, let's check out the dollar index. Speaking of banks, back to a short-term time frame on a five-minute basis. Yeah, keep your eye on this one as well, man, because the market may be digesting what happened yesterday today. May not have wanted to trade lower yesterday after such a tremendous month in November, but be careful today, folks, because I was talking about yesterday that I could feel that we might be going red, and you never know, okay? It's not like I, I have a... Uh, that you're sure of wherever. You can never be sure what's gonna happen, right? But all signs are pointing to the fact that the number was di the market was digesting that number yesterday. It was figuring out that the bar was pretty high, so yields were actually going up on a pretty nice number, and the market pulled back. But they weren't gonna have it to end the month. But guess what? They might do it to start December. We get S&Ps off by 11, NASDAQ 100 off by 59. We're coming back for the market open. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P negative by 10 points, we'll call it. 45.67. You got the NASDAQ 100 off by 66. The Dow off by 7. How about Salesforce yesterday, right? Boy, you talk about strength, man. Uh, Salesforce, earnings Wednesday night. You accelerate higher to the tune of about 20 plus dollars yesterday. You're talking about 8% acceleration. That put a real bid in the Dow. Only 30 stocks in the Dow, and the expensive stocks have the biggest impact, and a stock like 
Salesforce that trades at 230 bucks, it's going to have a huge impact when it trades up by 8% like that. All right, what else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of crude oil. Where am I? Got a couple articles up here. Oh, that was not the one. Okay, well, we'll start with this tweet, which I was going to jump to second. Not familiar with even who this is. One of my friends was uh, Institute for Progress. This is the founder. Nonetheless, you're talking about what percentage of Americans, great question, are aware that we now produce nearly 50% more oil than Saudi Arabia. Isn't that bonkers? I mean, even being in the market, that's pretty bonkers. The Now, these, this chart here is the crude oil production as a percentage of the world total. Okay, and you see the U.S., you see where we were in 2017, you see where we are coming in for a forecast of 2023. Uh, pretty remarkable, and the price of crude is showing it. And yeah, do you know, I mean, I was looking this up the other day as well. We use, check this out, the United States consumes an average of about 20 million barrels of oil a day. 20 million barrels of oil a day. Uh, and I think, what are we producing right now? 13 or 14 million barrels, something like that? It might be. So, you know, everybody gets up in arms that we're producing so much oil with climate change. And I'm all about climate change, being real and protecting the earth for my son. But it's remarkable that we're using 20 million barrels a day. Did my mic cut out? Check, testing. Did I lose you? No, I think I'm good. Maybe if you can let me know. Testing one, two. You got me? In and out, huh? Yeah. I don't know. All right, let me know if it works. It's showing it's working. Hopefully we're there. Sounds good now. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, you see the price there. Uh, excuse me. You see the chart there. Pretty remarkable. I mean, I was wondering, ask yourselves, what, what do you think? If you asked, uh, you know, 100 Americans on the street, who produces more oil right now? The United States or Saudi Arabia? I feel like only 5% of the public would know something like that just because it's such a distorted perception of what's going on. Yeah, nonetheless, uh, crude showing that price from where we are in terms of crude sitting, and I'll pull it up in a second. I was looking, I had one more crude article up here that we were going to talk about as a segue. All right, we'll find it. Yeah, forgive me. Is that it? Ah, here we go. Perfect. I found it. So, this is talking about oil land grab continues, and Oxy is in talks with Crown Rock that will make a few remaining large parcels in the Permian Basin pricey. So, this Permian Basin, right? How about it? Just blowing up. Um, yeah, this Crown Rock produces nearly 150 barrels of oil equivalent a day. I mean, you, you, you start adding those up, man, and that's how the U.S. starts getting above even Saudi Arabia, which is pretty remarkable. All right, you get the Dow climbing to positive territory. Look at Salesforce. They're helping it out. Salesforce up by a buck fifty yet again, up by six tenths percent in a negative market right now. Let's see how the big dogs are trading. Apple. Oh, Apple gives it up. Be careful. NASDAQ 100 trading a lower price. What's happening with yields right now? Yeah, we got the 10-year. Sitting pretty much where we kicked off things. Let's see how the dollar's doing right now. Yeah, dollar strength. So you're getting dollar strength. You're getting higher yield. You're getting negative markets right now as you come into December trading. And boy, we got a lot of gains, right? Do you, how do you make that call in terms of, boy, we got a lot of gains this year. You're going to risk those gains if we get a pullback, man? You're going to risk those gains? This is a weekly. You just gained... 400 plus points in the S&P from October 30th. Be interesting to see if we get some sellers earlier this month ahead of what could be a little bit of a pullback when you're talking about an S&P that entered the year at about 3,900. So you're up 660 points. It's more than what, 16, 17% acceleration. NASDAQ 100, boy, you entered that year at like almost a cherry pick low of 11,000. You add basically 5,000 points to the index over the course of the year. Uh, boy, you're talking about video game numbers, but a little bit of a pullback today. We'll see who wants to press their luck for the final month of the, of the trading year.
in the den. Let me know if you're in that scenario. You think we're trading higher or we're trading lower coming into January 1st? It's an interesting conversation when you look at the run that we've had this year, the gains you can lock in, uh, but maybe you want to wait it out. Try and see if you can close things out on January 1st, right? Yeah. All right, let's jump to, uh, to that crude contract. Yeah, crude. Right where we kicked off the year. Pretty remarkable. Crude at $76. Made it up to 90 briefly, uh, but nothing like we saw in 2022. And yields, not a lot of people saw this one as well. We started the year at 113. We made it down to 105. It was sitting at 109 right now as we've had higher yields progress. And pretty interesting where we are in terms of right where we were about a year ago. Right? November 14th, a year ago, we were sitting right at 109.26. The market was thinking the Fed would be done a little bit quicker potentially than they were. Things were a little bit persistent. We got that second acceleration with yields higher. And uh, it looks like we've probably turned that corner. But we always get surprises and we'll see what 2024 has to hold. That's for sure. All right. We're coming into the holidays, folks, and we got a big announcement. We got a holiday Tiger Dollar sale going on. So this is live on the front page of TFNN right now. We just launched it. We're going to run it for two weeks, okay? So this ends the weekend of December 15th. That's the Friday. We'll run it through that weekend, December 17th. We've doubled all the bonuses that you get on Tiger Dollars, folks. If you're new to TFNN, Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN service, whether you're talking about the newsletters, whether you're talking about any of the webinars we have, whether you're talking about Larry's live trading webinars, whether you're talking about Tim Ward's webinars that he's done recently, any webinar, any paid service we have at TFNN, you can use your Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are normally available. Okay, they're always available. But what we do for this sale is we double the bonus. So normally you're getting a 10, 15, or a 20% bonus for the higher, highest purchase level of $1,500. But we doubled them. So now you have three options of a 20%, a 30%, or a 40% bonus on your purchase. If you're new to TFNN, you're thinking about trying out newsletters, they never expire. You can transfer them to friends and family if you want to, okay? There's no yearly um, administration fee where they're diminished every year. Never expire, okay? You can use them for any service going forward. And there's three options. You spend 500, you get a 20% bonus. That's an extra 100 Tiger Dollars for free. So you end up with 600 Tiger Dollars. You spend 1,000, you get a 30% bonus. That's 300 extra Tiger Dollars for a 1,300 Tiger Dollar balance. Or you spend 1,500 for a 40% bonus. You get 600 Tiger Dollars bonus for 2,100 Tiger Dollars. Uh, check it out. We'll also, we're also going to send you a TFNN Tiger Mug, and we'll get that up there as well. But we get some Tiger Mugs. We usually send those out. We've been ordering those. Uh, and I'm going to get my Tiger Mug. Yeah, maybe I'll go get my Tiger Mug right now. Maybe I will. Uh, check out the holiday Tiger Dollar sale, folks. Running for two weeks on the front page of TFNN. We'll come back. We'll talk some different equities. We'll move it this Friday as we kick off December. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Don't forget to check out that Tiger Dollar sale on the front page of TFNN. Yeah, I got my TFNN mug with my Tiger. I uh, love that Tiger, that color, TFNN Educating Investors. So we'll send those out to everybody as well. And check it out. We do these sales about twice a year. So what else do we have going on? We got Chairman Powell. He's talking today. Uh, we'll see if he surprises the market. I imagine we've already heard the Fed speak out of the different governors, okay, the Fed presidents. I wouldn't expect anything too surprising. He's going to give his view of the economy in Atlanta Friday. I imagine he's going to be talking about that they still, it's too early to talk about cuts, right? They just started pausing pretty much, and I would imagine they're not going to go there coming yet. We'll see, though, um, as he gets ready to talk. Um, and, yeah, they're saying the same thing, right? I mean, this is, I'm not familiar, Matt Malley from Miller Tabak. There's little question that pretty much all the Fed speak in the past two weeks has been a bit more dovish than what we had heard earlier. So it's going to be interesting whether Powell confirms this shift. He's not going to go against that, man. All right. Um, the data is lined up for it too well to go against it. You know, you heard, was it Williams talking about that they're the most restrictive they've been in 25 years? Okay, he's the New York Fed president. That's like second honcho in charge. And he's out there saying we're more restrictive than we've been in 25 years, going back to the year 1997, 98 is where they are. So at some point, excuse me, if it's that restrictive and inflation keeps coming down, they're going to need to cut in order just to not be ratcheting up how restrictive things are. And that's why the rhetoric, I think, has to change. And I imagine you're going to see the chairman reiterate that. But please keep in mind that we got some amazing inflation data yesterday, and yields did not pull back. They actually went up. So don't expect that somehow Chairman Powell says that maybe we've reached the end of this hiking cycle. The market has figured that out, in my opinion. So that's going to be the interesting part, right? If he says something like that, does the market really react, or is that already priced in? When do you, we just had the tenure. Right, dropped 60 to 70 basis points over the course of five or six weeks. But nonetheless, we get to find out. Uh, so he'll be speaking today, and then we get non-farm payrolls next Friday, and we get the Fed decision itself on December 13th. All right, what else we got going on? Uh, yeah, we talk a little bit of American spending. So Americans are finally turning frugal after splurging over the summer. We'll see. But uh, retailers' warnings indicate consumer pullback. Labor market cooling may put more pressure on spending. Well, a Fed cut may help that, right? I don't kid, okay? U.S. personal spending cools. Continuing jobless claims rise. This is the change in inflation adjusted, okay? So this is inflation adjusted month over month when you're talking about 
personal spending. And yeah, you can see it cooling a bit, but pretty remarkable that even if inflation adjusted, that you're still in positive levels there. Yeah, it's not looking great, is one way to put it. We're seeing a weaker consumer, and that's significant. Didn't seem like a weaker consumer on Black Friday, man. Maybe there's just too big of a lag for it to eventually catch up, as in people using those savings, using a little bit of credit card, making it through the tough times, and keeping the economy going. Yeah, Walmart said there was a sharper fall off in sales during the last two weeks of October. I mean, the one thing I wonder here is how, and listen, they know it, right? If they're not expecting that, then that means it's not something that's seasonal. But if you're buying something at the end of October, would you think that maybe you would wait until you get some of those Black Friday sales or something like that, right? I'm always interested of who's out there buying big toys like this Tuesday, right? All the sales end. What do their numbers look like on the Tuesday after Cyber Monday? Probably pretty rough. Uh, and maybe that's where things can pop, get, you know, if consumers are feeling the pinch, it would make sense that they would be more aware and actually be more aware of the savings and um, take advantage of those as opposed to just waiting until the end of the holiday season to do that shopping. Yeah, the continuing claims did tick up a bit. Target talked about buyers were being, quote unquote, more careful, Dollar Tree. Uh, increasing financial stress among lower income households. That's a real deal, man. You know, with where prices are right now, okay, wages have not kept up for the lower end, especially in terms of where we are. And so that's going to matter in a big way. Look at this market. So we get the S&Ps. We're coming right up to where we closed yesterday. That price level is going to be 45.75 in the S&Ps. Keep your eye on that number, man. 45.75. Be interesting. We get Chairman Powell talking. We get the markets basically coming back to flat territory. Dow up by 23 and NASDAQ off by 54. Let's see what's hitting. We got Amazon shares. They catch a bit up by half a percent. Apple is flat after a little bit of volatility. Microsoft giving up some of those gains. Check it out. Microsoft. That's not what you want to see, man. You see, you start seeing these super high flyers like Microsoft, like NVIDIA. Okay, Apple's done tremendously well. And boy, the market cap that they add to the S&P, tremendous. But they haven't had the, what, quintuple banger that NVIDIA is in X amount of months, etc. Um, Netflix has had quite a run. They're off the highs as well. Meta shares off a percent today. Yeah, these super high flyers. Let's coin that term, the super high flyers, right? Facebook, almost tripling in value this year. Netflix, ah, they go from 300 to 471. Actually, not that remarkable when you compare it to the NASDAQ 100, which is bonkers in itself. But what's the NASDAQ 100 up this year? 40%, 35%, somebody know in the den? It's a bonkers number. Uh, nonetheless, Netflix up big numbers there. We talked about NVIDIA, right? What do we do? Yeah, NVIDIA. Yeah, it's like a five-bagger from 100 to 500. Microsoft. Yeah, just staggering numbers across the board, man. And then you look at Amazon, even goes from uh, 80 bucks to 150 almost. Yeah, it would make sense. They got to base out a bit, right? A little bit of consolidation, something. When you go from 100 to 500, let's check in on yields again. So we keep our eye on it. Yeah, so I imagine they're going to be waiting to get a little bit of clearance from Powell today as we come into Friday trading. Oof, watch out for that dollar, man. We got dollar strength. And the market's going to have a struggle with that, man. Dollar strength with the dollar up by 18 ticks right now. Let's see how some of the currencies are trading. Let's see. Ooh, look at that euro drop. Euro back to 108 right now. Jump over to the yen. Yeah, the yen just chopping around. That's a real euro drop. Let's check out the pound. Yeah, look at that euro compared to some of those others, man. 108.49 on the euro with the S&Ps off by about six points right now. Yeah, this one's an interesting. From, I was reading this one. Um, you got to love the headline. Wall Street takes fight over arcane banking rules to Main Street. The big banks want to convince the public they should worry about regulations. Folks, don't worry about banking regulations, okay? Uh, yes, we want to have a free economy, a free society, all that stuff, Okay. But we just had banks with balances of a quarter trillion dollars being insolvent because of the rules they put in place. There's no reason banks of that size can't handle some regulations.
talk about the small banks. That's the base for Have $250 billion in assets. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down by five points right now. And, yeah, so I believe we get Chairman Powell coming up at 11 a.m. Eastern time. I was trying to find that exact time. I think it's 11 o'clock. If somebody else has any differently, please let us know in the Tiger's Den. But I believe he will be speaking. Uh, and it may be back-to-back -back discussions. I was trying to get that. If anybody has it, let's see. Yeah, he's got a double bagger. Thanks, Z. He's got Jerome Powell at 11 a.m. and Jerome Powell at 2 p.m. And with that, we also got uh, Austin Goolsby. He'll be talking at 10 o'clock. And Lisa Cook, she'll be talking at 2 o'clock. So Chairman Powell, 11 o'clock is the first time he's going to get a chance to put those words out there. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say, to say the least, right? And, yeah, on that schedule, too, Yeah, it's interesting, you know, going back to some of the Fed speak this week, and we got like one minute to finish up the program. 
But this is the stuff that raises some eyebrows when you talk about Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin said he's not ready to commit to a particular policy path with so much uncertainty in the air. Now, this is from Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday when he was making his remarks. OK, Bostic also was talking Wednesday saying that an essay that he sees economic growth slowing substantially and believes inflation will come down further as well. They are at a restricted policy rate. You do not need the data to continue to come down to have to cut more. That's the disingenuous part of some of these arguments, I think, out there, where they're trying to be right as hawkish as you can be to make sure that things stay restrictive. And yes, there's uncertainty in the, in the air, okay? But it doesn't have to continue to ease. If it just stays where it is for right now for a period of time, they'll probably have to cut because it's restrictive enough that that will cause it by itself. So anyway, for what it's worth, Chairman Powell, coming up at 11 o'clock, we got an hour, we got the S&Ps sitting right now by negative five points, NASDAQ 100 off by 58, the Dow up by 43 points, and we check on yields as we end the program. Yeah, and we're pushing a little bit of highs. You know what, we'll check in on the dollar as we end the program. DXY, yeah, watch out, man. This market holding up well so far, but we have higher yield right now, and we have dollar strength, and we got market weakness. Folks, thanks so much. Have a great weekend, a safe weekend. Dazzle's coming up right now at 10 o'clock. We got live programming, folks. Don't forget about the Tiger Dollar.